Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So this is the new Audi A3. It's all very exciting. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk you around its exterior design. This shape has been inspired by a Lamborghini. Show you inside. This part has also been inspired by a Lamborghini. See how practical it is. Ow. Try out some of its technology. Sorry, couldn't resist. And poke it with a banana. I couldn't find any sticks. Now, before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Let's start off this video by talking about the new A3's design because there's plenty to show you. Now you might be thinking, Matt, are you pleased to see me or do you have a banana in your pocket? Well, yes, I have a banana in my pocket. To illustrate this, look, there are no fake exhaust pipes here. Yes, there's this design treatment here, but there's no fake exhaust pipes. Audi's listened to customers and probably journalists as well, fed up with them poking their fake exhaust with sticks and stuff. And they've decided to do away with them. So the exhausts are hidden underneath and you just have this bit at the rear end. However, there is still some fake vintage there. So they haven't fully got over the fakiness. Anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. One of the key things about this car is that Audi's tried to make it more sporty looking than the previous A3. So it has the largest spoiler ever fitted to an A3. It's twice the size as on the old A3. Then there's the tail lights, which are nice and slim, and they look really good with this LED effects in them as well. I like them a lot. Moving down the side is where the big news happens. This car is actually lower than the old A3, and that's designed to make it look more sporty. This one is fitted with the optional roof bars, which kind of undoes some of the sportiness, but it does sort of make the car look like a baby RS6. Key thing to note is this though, you've got these blistered wheel arches inspired by the Quattro from the 1980s, and it does help give it some stance on the road. Most interesting feature I think though is this. Just look at all the changing surfaces and direction in the body panels. The old A3 had like smooth sides. This is completely different. Apparently this look was inspired by the body panels on the Lamborghini Count Ash. It's quite unusual on a car this level to have such crazy surfacing going on. It reminds me a little bit of Chris Bangle design BMWs. Now moving down the front, other wheels on this car, they're 19 inches. You won't get those as standard. The cars start off with 16 inches, then rise in size as you go up the range. Look, bonnet, more creases. And the car is longer than before, which does make it seem a bit more sporty yet again. But the reason for the increased length is improved crash protection at the front, mainly for pedestrian protection. As a result, Audi has tried to lower the nose, like they did on the RS6, to get away from the fact that there is quite a bit of distance between the front wheel and the very front of the car. The grille is now slightly more squashed than before, but it is wider. Once again, that improves the sporty look to it. This is the European version. And if you have one of these in America, you don't have this blacked out bit here. It's honeycomb all the way through because the Americans, the lucky buggers, don't have to have a front number plate like we do. Now the actual look of the front bumper will change depending on which model you get, whether it's the entry level car, the sport, or the S line. This is a mid-level sport look and there's loads of different accents and stuff here. And normally on previous Audis, this would be a whole kind of fake air vent, but yet again, Audis trying to move away from the fakiness. They've reduced the lies to a smaller white lie, this panel here. And they've used different surfacing to just fill in this area here. Key thing on this at the front are the new lights. So all A3s get this special light design and you have 15 little LEDs in there. And depending on which model you go for, you'll have a different graphic. Also, S-Line models will have a vent there in the bonnet, just like the A1. And just like the A1, it will be a fake vent. Now, what do you think of the look of this new Audi A3? Click on the pop-out banner up there to vote which you think looks the best. This new Audi, the BMW 1 Series, the Mercedes A-Class, or the Volkswagen Golf. Apart from the R8, this is the sportiest interior of any Audi to date. It's really got this wraparound cockpit feel to it, and that's accentuated by these air vents up here, which are rather like those on a Lamborghini Urus. Yet again, Audi's designers have admitted that they've taken inspiration from Lamborghini for this car, which I think is a good thing. The quality of the materials are also a good thing. Really nice materials, 
generally about the place. They do get a little bit cheap in places and lower down, but that's to be expected. It's similar in this car's rivals, really. But everything does feel solid. Look, there's no shake in the centre console, no matter how much I try to flex it. This particular model actually has an S-line interior, even though the outside is based on the mid-spec Sport. As a result, you get these lovely sport seats with integrated headrests. They are very nice. I like the fact you've got Alcantara in the middle of them with this diamond quilting effect. Also, you sit lower than in the old A3, and that adds to the sporty feeling. The gear selector is pretty short in terms of the throw. If you get the automatic version, you have a little toggle switch just like in the new Volkswagen Golf. So it frees up space here and it has its own unique designed center console. Now, the volume control is a bit odd. It's a touch sensitive button. So you just scroll it like that to increase the volume and do it the other way to make it quieter. And it's hard to get it actually around the gear selector. Though I suppose if you're driving, you just use the one on the steering wheel. It's not such a problem. This car also comes with decent connectivity. So there's two USB inputs here in the front. You can also get wireless charging for your mobile phone. And there's plenty of room for storing your mobile devices down here. Cup holders here. Point of storage under there. But the door bins are nice and large. And the glove box, that's all right. One thing that's always been a bit ridiculous is how Audi got rid of all the buttons for the climate control on their latest cars, like the QA, the A6 and stuff. So they're a bit of a faff to operate when you're driving because you have to do it through the touchscreen, but they bought them back for this new A3. Look, there's climate control buttons. You can do it with one press. That's good news. What's less good news though is this. I don't know why they put this stitching in the top of the dash. It's pointless. As in the front, you sit lower down in the back of this new A3 compared to the old car. As a result, headroom is pretty good. Well, it is good when there's just two of you in the back. The roof actually does slope quite inwards as you can see it gives the car that sporty look but it means that you can quite easily bang your head on this part here especially if you've got three in the back could pose a problem that good if you want to give lots of people a lift i do like these seats though they're mirrored from the front really nice sporty seats knee room is pretty decent as well it's generally quite nice back here also there's two usb connections there as well usb c of course because this is a brand new car you can also get climate control here in the back so you can get tri-zone climate control with this car another option you can have is a panoramic glass sunroof which i could do with right now because it is quite dark in here because this rear window isn't that big but at least it does this look goes pretty much all the way down. We'll just forgive it that bit. That doesn't matter because I can still rest my arm here. Like I'm living in the 1980s. I think everyone just drives with the windows up and the climate on down there these days. Oh well. Despite this more sloping tailgate, the boot capacity of the new A3 is exactly the same as the old A3. 380 litres, which is about right for this size of car. So yeah, that's, that's handy. Oh, and look, if you fold down the rear seats. Oh, come on. You can do it. They do lie almost completely flat. Though the actual capacity when you've got the seats folded is ever so slightly less than the old A3. I think that's to do with the fact that it's lower. The new A3 gets Audi's very latest version of their infotainment system. It's more advanced than that even in the Q8. You operate everything through this main touchscreen. You get 10 inches as standard, which is good news. It's very crisp, easy to use and to navigate. Obviously it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard. And if you pay extra for the inbuilt sat nav, then you can import stuff by writing. Now this is great when you're in a left-hand drive car, if you're right-handed, but if you're in the UK car, you have to use it with your left hand. So it's like, oh, no, I can't, no. I can't, can't write. E -E <laughs> it's just utter nonsense. Still, you can use voice inputs if you want to. Audi has its own system of natural voice recognition, and you can say things like, I'm hungry, and it'll direct you to a restaurant. The satellite navigation also has Parkopedia, so it'll find you a parking space, not just in like a normal multi-story car park, but also roadside parking as well, which is really, really good. That is a new update for this car. Now, as we move on to the digital driver's display, as standard, you get a 10-inch system. This is an upgraded 12 inches, which is just a little bit larger by two inches, surprisingly. The one that's 10 inches actually has two little bars down the side, which is filled in, and it has the oil temperature gauge and your fuel gauge. It's nicer just having the larger one, though, so it's probably well worth the upgrade. What is annoying, though, is that you can't have the map from your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay on that screen, only Audi's own map. Those people who do like a rotary controller will be a little bit sad, but don't worry too much because you can operate most of the functions using the steering wheel mounted controls, so it's no big issue, really. Calm down. It's going to be fine.
This new A3 is built on a revised version of the platform from the old A3 and it's the same platform that underpins the new Golf. You can get it with sports suspension, you get that if you have an S-Line model and it lowers the suspension by 15 millimetres to make it look more sporty and improve the handling. As standard the car gets speed sensitive steering so it goes lighter when you're going slowly so it's easy to manoeuvre and it gets heavier when you're going faster so it's not all twitchy. You can also get progressive steering which will increase the amount of steering angle the more you turn the wheel that doesn't really make sense does it because that usually happens anyway what i mean to say is that it makes it feel nice and stable when you're just turning it a bit but you don't have to twirl the wheel so much to do tight turns and that just makes the car feel more agile of course you can get certain versions with adaptive suspension which will stiffen up the suspension if you put it into sports mode or relax it if you put it into comfort mode also by going through different driving modes you can alter things like the throttle response the weight of the steering and stuff like that now, if you buy an A3 with more than 150 horsepower, you get independent rear suspension, whereas the lower power versions have a torsion beam rear suspension, which isn't fully independent. And it's not quite so good over bumps then. It's not, believe me. I've backed about the cars. You do notice a slight difference, especially if you're a little bit anal like me. All right, let's talk engines and check this out. Look, the bonnet is supported by a gas strut. How premium is that? So petrol engine choices will be a one litre three cylinder turbo with 110 horsepower, a 1.5 litre turbo petrol with 150 horsepower, and you'll be able to get that engine with mild hybrid technology. There'll also be a two litre turbo petrol with 333 horsepower in the S3. That car will actually have all wheel drive, whereas all the others will be front wheel drive. There's also a 1.4 litre plug-in hybrid turbo petrol if you want some economy and some electric only driving ability. Then there's two diesels, both two litre, one with 115 horsepower and another with 150 horsepower. You'll be able to get the car with a seven speed automatic gearbox or a six speed manual. Do you fancy one of these new Audi A3s? Well, if you do, you can actually order one now. They're gonna start from around 25 thousand pounds now if you click on the pop-out banner up there you can go to carwow to compare reviews and prices of this car's rivals such as the volkswagen golf the bmw one series and also put your name down for one of these cars if you'd like to why not go check it out just up there easy audi has done a lot of work to make this car as aerodynamic as possible so i'm going to give you some numbers now which might not mean that much to you so this car has a drag coefficient of 0.28 cd the old a3 had a drag coefficient of 0.31 CD, which is not as good. And to put it into perspective, a BMW 1 Series has a drag coefficient of 0.29 CD. So the Audi wins, yeah! Anyway, the way they've achieved it is by doing certain tricks, such as having a pretty much flat underfloor, which helps smooth airflow underneath the car. Also, a lot of cars will have a vent here, which will feed air in to cool the brakes. And that does increase the drag. That's why they've got this fake vent here. What actually happens is that the air from the engine bay is used to cool these brakes, so it's a lot more efficient. Another thing that the car does is have a grill which can open and shut to only actually open up when the car needs its engine cooling. That way it's just more efficient and helps slip through the air much easier. And that improves your fuel economy. This new A3 is available with a whole suite of Audi driver assistance systems. It's the first time the A3 gets a heads-up display and you get it in colour as well, which is really nice. Then there's driver's aid to stop you crashing into stuff. In fact, this car is covered in cameras, radars, sensors, and it'll prevent you from driving into things forward, driving into things backwards as well, and it'll help keep you in lane on the motorway. Of course, you can upgrade things and have stuff like top of the range automated cruise control, which will not only keep you a safe distance from the car in front, but also automatically steer the car to keep it in lane. For this new A3, look, there's climate control buttons. You can do it with one press. Just stop. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, you're, 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 in the back of, you're in the back of our shot. I can see you. 